Thanks, Michael. Um, great to be back with the group. Great to see the guys. We had an excellent training week. Could see the focus in the team. Now we get to compete against two um, potential opponents in, um, in the World Cup. Uh, they can come out of Asia, so it'll be interesting to see their diverse styles and what they bring and how we can counteract that. Um, but overall, really good week. Tomorrow we'll start the game with Matt and Goal, Serginho on the right, Chris Richards and Tim Ream, Anthony Robinson on the left. It's between Luca and Tanner Tessman, um, center mid. Then we have Eunice Weston, attacking mid. And then we go Christian, Ballo, and Timmy Wea across the top. Ballo will only play 45 minutes due to his um, lack of preseason, and we want to really get him into it in the right way. So he'll play 45 minutes at halftime. Rico will come in for him. That's it for me. So if you're going to ask what's new, <laughs> there's something for day one. We'll start with Stephen Goff from the Washington Post. Uh, thanks for the lineup. I assume this will be a uh, this will be an occurrence before every game over the next couple of years, right? Sure. <laughs> uh, what, it's obviously been a while since your last game as coach. Um, what are some of the emotions um, and thoughts as you enter this new stage? You know, I, I think the emotions were probably last week before you come into camp, and then when you get into camp, um, you just feel so comfortable, whether it's with the staff or with the players. Um, you know, you pick right up where you left off. And, um, you know, we built some really strong relationships over, the, over these last four years. It was good to get in the camp and rekindle them and, and see the staff. You know, th the whole group has been working at a really high level for these last um, eight months, and it's been really nice to see from afar. What, um, what, are, uh, what are some of the lessons learned over the past few years that you've been able to maybe think about as you've approached this moment? Yeah, I mean, the way we work, um, Stephen, is – you know, it's for us. It's about reflecting every single moment, every single training session. You know, so like for us, it, it's like, you know, it, it's the culmination of things just building on top of each other. We review every session with really fine detail. Every single game with really fine detail, and we try to learn from every experience that we have together, and then keep building on it. So, you know, what I know, I think in a nutshell, I'd say that, um, you know, these the games at the World Cup at the highest level are very difficult games. Um, one thing we learned, the whole group learned, the group stage was like uh, three finals, and then you have the knockout stage, and that's like final, final. I mean, it's, those are tough games. And you have to be resilient. You have to have a deep squad to be able to battle through those games. Um, and you have to have a clear identity. So uh, for us, it's continuing to build on the, the foundation of what we've had in the last four years, um, keep improving, and really target 2026 as an opportunity to, um, to ch change soccer in America forever. Jeff Carlisle from ESPN FC. Hi, Greg. Um, to that end, to what degree do you, have you had an opportunity in this camp to kind of build on things tactically and maybe add some tweaks uh, to what you're doing? Or, or is it there's just not enough time given when, when players come in? And also, what are you expecting from Uzbekistan? So they play, they've been playing 5 2 3 in, in all of their last games. They don't give up a lot of goals, it'll be a difficult breakdown. Um, they have a counter-attacking solution on the, on the right-hand side of the field with their winger. Um, and they're good, technically good players. So I think it's going to be – it will be a difficult game. In terms of um, what we're trying to do is, is, is really, um, you know, continue – that foundation that I talk about is, is saying, okay, we, we like what's been built, but we want to keep getting better. And that was the message to the guys. And then it was, okay, we have three years to keep improving. What what phases do we need to improve and what what wrinkles do we need to put in that are going to help us get there? How do we need to so support the players in a way that they can keep improving with their clubs? But overall, um, for us, it's just how do we keep moving forward and not being happy with where we were? Can you give us an example of maybe one of those things that you're trying to? It's literally in, in everything, every aspect. It's It's evolving. You know, I think it's like you'd work with any team. Is you know, I don't think any team. If you look at the top teams in the world, they they evolve throughout the years, and and we want to be in this state uh, of evolving because we know it's going to lead to improvement. Whether that's set pieces, whether that's um, mid block defending, you know, the consistency in a mid block that we don't have to high press all game. You know, there's there's a number of different things that we can start to talk about with the group. Paul Tenorio from the Athletic. 
Um, Greg, you, you talked about changing soccer in America forever. Weston seemed to give us a little bit of a preview of that idea. Yeah. Um, this is a unique period for American soccer and, and the events that are coming to this country over the next few years, the Copa America, the Club World Cup, the World Cup, potentially the Women's yeah. World Cup. Um, obviously, Messi's here in the United States now. That kind of adds like a runway to it, to the eyeballs to this country as well in the domestic league. Uh, what have you laid out for the team about how to change soccer in America forever, what this moment means, and, and how you think about the next three years in 2026 and, and kind of how to accomplish that goal? Yeah, so for, for us, it's, um, it's, it's really the work we can do in the next three years to build the group that when we go into the World Cup, we're confident that we can beat the elite of international soccer because that's what it's going to take to do what we're talking about doing. Right? If we want to go to rounds that we've never been before, it's going to be we have to beat those teams. And we we'll use the next three years to build the team up, to gain the experiences, to, to, that we're confident that we can actually do that. And when we say, you know, change soccer in America forever, for me, it's, it's both on the field and off the field. You know, we have a fantastic group of guys. I think the world got to see that in the last World Cup with their humility and, and how they act and, and, and what type of people they are. And, you know, I'm excited for America to get to know the group better, both on and off the field. Tom? No? Anything? No. Okay, great. We will go to our questions from Zoom and begin with Doug McIntyre from Fox. Thanks, Michael. Hi, Greg. Um, two questions, if I may. First, earlier this week, you had the team meet with um, you know, program alumni in St. Louis. Um, what was the reason for that? Why, why did you think that was important? Um, when you talk about areas of improvement, I'm just curious how much you know, scoring goals, because it's obviously the hardest thing to do in the game, but how much of that is the focus? Uh, and what can you do this cycle to make sure you're creating uh, more opportunities and finishing those opportunities uh, when they come? Thank you. Yeah, I think we know at the, at the World Cup level, um, scoring goals is, is the hardest thing. Um, to do, right? Every team has difficulty doing that. So that's something that you're always working on. Every team, I, I believe, is, is working on that. Um, you know, we can a uh, detail some, some principles in the attacking third, some, some ways we want to break down opponents. That's, that's, those are things that we've been doing. Um, but overall, we, you know, we want to position ourselves in any game against anybody to be able to win the game. And, and that's the most important thing. Um, you know that at the end of the 90 minutes, we're the, we're the team that's that's leading. In terms of <coughs> what you know, this inviting the, the the players from St. Louis that that received the national team cap into camp. You know, one thing we have is a great respect for our her heritage. We know where we came from. We honor where we came from. Um, we we have a great amount of pride for representing our nation, um, representing the, the U.S. Men's National Team program. And it's nice to connect, I think, um, members from the past of that heritage to, to members of the now. And, and that's all we did. We honored them. We, we showed them their unique cap number in the history of, of U.S. soccer and really just spent some time with them. And I, I know, um, you know the group appreciated it, but I know our guys did also got, getting to meet some of those players. Next will be Ron Blanc from the Associated Press. Hey, Greg. As you come into this week, what are some of the new structures or routines that you put in place that were different than uh, the previous uh, three years? I'm not sure, Ron. I really can't you know, reflect on that. What we did was we took stock on what we thought was working really well. Um, and things we thought needed improvement. And, and then we went, um, you know, set out to, to make some improvement. Um, but, you know, again, I, I believe, especially seeing from afar when I was out of it, the, the group and how they function, I thought they did a really good job. And hearing about the stories and the culture within the team, it's, it's a really strong culture. And um, the way I would look at it is, again, continuing to build on this strong foundation. Um, and. And that's going to take time. You know, we have three years um, to do it. But you know, the foundation and the the culture within the team is very strong. Next is Henry Bushnell from Yahoo. Thanks, Michael. Um, Greg, you touched on Christian on the, the Zoom call last week. Now that you've had a chance to to see him in training for a week and even maybe even day to day away from the field, um, does anything feel different about him now compared to like last year at this time when he was obviously in a 
a very different club environment and, and kind of struggling through that year at Chelsea? You know, one thing we talked about w with the group um, was the amount of growth the individuals have made over the last three years or last four years. And, you know, to think about Christian when, we, when I first met him in Dortmund in 2018 to Christian now um, is night and day. And that goes for a lot of the players. And we talked about one of the challenges for the group is going to be, you know, can they have that same level of progress in these next three years that they've had in the last four years? And because, the, you know, Joe Scali was playing for NYCFC's youth team, you know, four years ago. And now he's, a, you know, a consistent member of the national team. Um, you, you look at, um, you know, Serginho Des where he was, and, and, and by and large, every one of the players made a huge, huge strides in these last four years. And, and that's what we need to be focused on in these next three years if we want to reach our, our goals. Our next question comes from Brian Shreda from American Soccer Now. Thank you. Um Michael and Greg, earlier in the week you talked about um, earlier in the week about St. Louis as a soccer city. I mean, specifically, what has made this thing, this city, so great? I mean, it goes back to like 1950, and they were making an impact, and they make an impact now. And and, and, and the legacy kind of continues with like Josh Sargent and Tim. But then also, um, that's our first question. The second one is I wonder if you can comment on the newcomers into camp and how they perform, specifically Kevin Brady's uh, Ben Kamashi. Christopher Lund, um, what are they showing for your first week and how are they integrating into the group and what have you seen from them? Thank you. You know, I think it's the roots. When, when you think about St. Louis, um, it, it's the history. Um, you look at some of these clubs and they've been working, they've been going strong. You know, Scott Gallagher for, for decades have been strong clubs and, and the roots with um, hosting games and, um, and, and it being a, a real soccer city. And I think the beauty of that is um, to see how soccer's grown throughout the United States. Because now, you know, you can point to other markets and, markets and say, wow, they're, you know, they're, they have their own soccer culture. We look at Atlanta, for example, how they came on the scene and, and the, the fan base there and the, the um, support for soccer is off the charts. When you look at Austin, what they've been able to do, you go up Pacific Northwest and Seattle with its history in Portland. And so... You, you know, soccer spreading across the United States, and, and it's wonderful to see. And when you get to be here and honor some of the tradition and, and the roots of the game um, is even more special. So, you know, we're excited about um, uh, being here, and we're excited to keep playing in other markets, honestly, to, to really spread what we're doing. As far as Ben, um, Christopher, and Kevin, um, they've all looked good. You know, it's a young group. I mean, we played we – played, um, seven aside today and we had old versus medium versus young and like the old team is Christian Weston Anthony Robinson Serginho I mean it's it's off the charts how young this group is and to have 18 19 year olds in camp is really fun and they've been doing a good job next will be Joseph DiPolito uh, thank you very much Greg um, what makes Matt Turner unique among the goalkeepers you have either um, played in front of or managed, and how would you describe the progress he has made since um, his days with New England? Yeah, I think the, the obvious answer to that is his trajectory, right? It's, it's abnormal. You don't have a guy go to Fairfield, Fair College, Fair, Fairfield College and then start in the World Cup in, in, for the national team. It's, it's amazing. And, um, you know, it all has to do with him, what type of person he is, he is and his work ethic. Um, it's been really fun for me to be part of that entire process. Um, you know, I remember when, when his coming into his first camp, um, you know, we're doing a training exercise, and he, he receives the ball and he goes to throw it, and then he, he second guesses himself and throws it into his own goal. And I immediately sent Bruce the text and said, we're getting your guy ready for, pre for the season, Bruce. But, I mean, that's literally how far Matt Turner has come. And it's been in, you know, I think that might have been in 2019. And three years later, he's starting the World Cup. He's a tremendous guy, tremendous work ethic. Um, his learning curve is steep. He learns really quickly and applies it. And, you know, I think he's got um, a long career in the Premier League ahead of him. Next will be 
Joseph Lowry. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Greg, for taking the time. You gave us the 11 earlier. You obviously had Moose Moose in there. What were your thoughts on him playing in a deeper role over the summer in the U.S.? And, and could he be someone that deputizes more often for Tyler Adams when Adams is maybe unavailable or against certain types of opponents? I think so. I mean, it's it's all about the game plan, and, and we expect this game, um, you know, to be a, a little bit different. We want someone um, in that position that is will be stable in that position, be able to get the ball to him in dangerous positions. That's the idea. Um, so you know, for him, we we like to free him up, give him a chance to run. I think one of his greatest qualities is running with the ball. We want to put him in, in position to do that, attack the back line when he gets an opportunity to. Um, but you know, he's he's a, I think another one with a disjointed preseason. He's getting now he's at Milan. I think it's going to be a great move for him. He's comfortable there, and it will be nice to see how he develops over this f fall season. And for us, we want to put him in position to go back there and, and be on his best foot. So giving him his game time, I think, is, is really important. We'll go to Sanjay Sujan Thakumar. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Greg, for the time today. Um, you mentioned earlier it was between Luca and uh, Tessman in the midfield. Could you talk more about that, what goes into that decision, and more specifically what you've seen from Tessman in this camp, his progress with Venezia, and um, where do you think he projects positionally yeah, it'll be nice to see how he develops. I, I think it's too early for me to call. Uh, he's playing, you know, in that role with Venezia. He's moving back into a back builds and they build with three, and he's at the center of them a lot of times. Then he moves up into midfield as the attack advances. Um, but for us, basically, Luca, you know, we got to check his health and his fitness. He has a little, he had a little bit of a calf. Niggle that we got to we have to check and make sure he's okay. If he's good, he'll start. Um, he'll start the game, and we'll go from there. But Tanner's looks solid, and if he if he gets to start the game, we're we're extremely comfortable with what he could do. We'll take a couple more questions and continue with Enrique Rafael. Thanks, Michael. Uh, good afternoon, coach, and thanks for your time. I uh, would like to talk about Johnny Cardoso, who was recently cut due to an injury. Well, he is uh, of a limited age to be drafted to the men's youth national team, so Mitrovic uh, will do his first training session at Coburn in the same window as the national team. Uh, my question is, is there a possibility is there a possibility that Johnny will play for both senior and youth national, te national teams? What's the plan for him next month? Yeah, I think it all depends on uh, on the player who's available for, for either team. Um, you know, we see him as a very high potential player. Uh, he's doing a great job with Internacional, especially in the Copa Libertadores. I'm excited to see his team continue on. I think they're in the semifinals right now. Um, and we'll see. We'll, we'll take it as it comes. But he was a guy that was supposed to be in our camp but had to pull out because of injury um, on the weekend. And um, and we'll keep monitoring him and, and hope he gets back on the field and then he can join um, either group as we go forward. Next is Hector Lazzari. Thanks, Michael. Hi, it's Hector Lazzari from Clara Sports in Mexico City. I wanted to ask Greg, uh, this cycle is going to be way different than the other qualifiers. Uh, you are not going to have you know, all the bulk of qualifiers. You are not going to have uh, Nations League in this in this window. You are going to be playing mostly friendlies. What is the plan to have the great matches, those rivals, and uh, to have the experiences that you are trying to to get to to have the proper preparation for the 2026 World Cup, and not only having like friendlies against the same rivals like the other hosts or maybe some teams like. Yeah, I mean, I, I think in this window in particular, um, getting the opportunity to play play against Asian competition when we won't be able to do that, you know, for the next two years uh, is valuable. I mentioned that these are two teams that could potentially be in the World Cup, so I think it's nice to be able to play them. L looking out for the rest of the year, we have friendlies in October against Germany and Ghana, which will be good games. We have Nations League in November, Nations League in March. So that's a chance to win um, another trophy for this group, and which we're focused on and will also get us into 
Copa America in the summer. So then finishing out the rest of that year or that summer, we'll have um, friendlies that we, we hope to play good, strong opponents in June, and then Copa America, which we know is going to be a very competitive tournament. So I, I think that for the for the um, that first year of the World Cup is um, you know is an exciting year, and um, it, it's going to help build the group for sure. Our last question today comes from Andrew Jones. Thank you, Michael Briggs. Just want to ask you how big question and what's your feel about being part of the whole group and your thoughts about the added time being implemented and the way for Big Five leagues this season and how it's been going in your mind. Thank you. Yeah, they were shocked. I think that's something that they were um, really surprised. They don't know how time flies. They, they th still think they're, they're the, one of the younger guys on the team, and they're not. They're senior players, so they're really surprised, and I think they, um, they didn't take it too well. So we'll have to talk to them this afternoon, get them in better spirits. Um, you know, that, that time question is a really interesting one. What, what do you guys think? Paul, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I agree with that. It's, I think it's in soccer, we like tradition. We like things how they've always been. But I agree that this is, I think this is a way to, to, for the fans to get their money's worth, to see the amount of time in play that they deserve. And it can potentially change tactics from, from players when they're staying down because they know the time's added anyway. And it's not going to do any good for them to, to stay down on the field and, and waste time. So. I think I'm in favor of it, but um, I reserve the right to change my decision.